Albert Einstein might be one of the most recognizable figures in physics, and his general theory of relativity is still considered the most important idea in modern physics. He famously fell in love with physics after being gifted a compass by his father, and his work led to the development of the nuclear bomb. In this video, we will explore some lesser-known facts about Einstein. Number 1. Einstein didn't fit the common perception of a prodigy. Although Einstein was clearly a gifted child, he didn't exactly fit the image of a mathematical prodigy. Einstein was a late talker and didn't start speaking until he was three. His slow speech development worried his parents, who consulted a doctor about it. Einstein didn't speak complete sentences until he was five, yet he became one of the most influential intellectuals of his time. His late onset of language, which was unrelated to his intellectual development, led to a diagnosable disorder known as Einstein syndrome. This syndrome is when a child has late language development but demonstrates excellence in other areas, such as analytical thinking. Children diagnosed with Einstein syndrome start speaking without issues and remain ahead of their peers in other regions. Einstein also had a psychiatric disorder called echolalia in early childhood. It was a mild form of the disorder, but it meant that, once he did start to speak, he would occasionally whisper words and phrases to himself before he spoke them out loud. Although he was clearly a bright child, Einstein hated school. He was frustrated by his fellow pupils, and his teachers felt that he was disrespectful since he asked questions they did not know the answers to, with one teacher telling him he would never amount to anything. Einstein disliked the rigid disciplinary teaching style of the teachers and felt that imagination is more important than knowledge. He was also notoriously forgetful and could not remember his own address or phone number. Supposedly, he once boarded a train and mislaid his ticket. An attendant recognized him and assured the famous physicist he could ride the train without a ticket. He replied, But if I don't have my ticket, I won't remember where to get off. Number 2. He had some strange aversions. Although Einstein loved sailing, he never learned to swim. This worried his family as he wasn't a particularly good sailor either, and he refused to wear a life jacket. Although he sailed his whole life, he would become relaxed and absent-minded as soon as he got into a boat, and would often run aground because he didn't look where he was going. According to most sources, Einstein was comically and dangerously bad at sailing, and capsized on more than one occasion, becoming trapped under a sail during one incident. Still, this didn't stop Einstein from enjoying these outings, but it didn't inspire him to learn to swim either. As well as life jackets, Einstein hated wearing socks. He once said when he was young, he found out that the big toe always ends up making a hole in his sock, so he stopped wearing them. He actually took pride in the variety of occasions that he was able to forego hosiery, writing to his cousin and future wife, Even on the most solemn occasions, I got away without wearing socks and hid the lack of civilization in high boots. Giving up wearing socks demonstrates the sort of logical leaps that Einstein is famous for. Most people would buy more socks or darn up the holes, but Einstein wanted a definite answer to the problem and was not content to continually react to the issue without resolving it. Number 3. He wasn't the best husband Einstein's first wife was Maleva Marich, a physicist and mathematician who studied alongside Einstein at the Polytechnic Institute in Zurich. Much debate has been about how much Maleva influenced Einstein's work, but by his own account, she, at the very least, helped him stay focused. On October 2, 1899, he wrote to her from Milan, saying, I miss having you nearby to kindly keep me in check and prevent me from meandering. When they finished their classes, both received similar results, except in applied physics, where she gained top marks, and in the oral exam, where Einstein came on on top. Maleva became pregnant in 1901, but Einstein was unemployed and refused to marry her since he did not have a job to support them. She gave birth to a baby girl in January 1902. The fate of the baby is unknown, but it is likely that she was given up for adoption or died of scarlet fever. The pair eventually married in 1903, after Einstein got a job in the patent office in Bern. Maleva became a housewife and mother supporting Einstein and working with him at night on intellectual pursuits. Maleva is known to have worked on many of Einstein's papers, although they were always published solely under his name. 
Despite seeming a happy couple that was well-matched intellectually, Einstein soon became detached and actively distanced himself from his wife. Many suggest that this was due to Maleva becoming jealous of her husband and suffering from depression. Whatever the reason, Einstein changed from a loving, doting husband and abandoned his family. Around 1912, Einstein started an affair with his cousin Elsa. He requested a divorce from Maleva, issuing her an ultimatum that if she wanted to remain married, A. You will see to it, 1. That my clothes and linen are kept in order, and 2. That I am served three regular meals a day in my room. B. You will renounce all personal relations with me except when these are required to keep up social appearances. He also wrote that she should expect no affection from me and leave my bedroom or study at once without protesting when I ask. Einstein finally obtained a divorce from Maleva in 1919 and married Elsa, although he briefly considered proposing to Elsa's 20-year-old daughter instead. It wasn't long before he indulged in more extramarital affairs, although the couple remained together until Elsa died in 1936. Number 4. The Nazi Party Targeted Him when Hitler became Chancellor of Germany in 1933, Einstein openly criticized the Nazi Party, calling out their repressive policies. Part in protest of the new government and part out of self-preservation, Einstein renounced his German citizenship, resigned from the Prussian Academy of Sciences in Berlin, and moved to a coastal villa in Belgium. In response to these publicly defiant acts, the German press began to attack Einstein and his scientific work was burned in the streets of Berlin. Einstein was accused of spreading communist atrocity propaganda. His bank accounts were confiscated, and his villa was reportedly searched for arms. His photograph appeared in a widespread anti-Semitic publication, captioned with Bis jetzt und gehangst, which translates to Not yet hanged. Due to the threats to Einstein's life, the Belgian royal family stationed armed police at his residence for protection. However, Einstein himself didn't take the threat seriously. Despite the public murder of his friend and Germany's foreign minister, Walter Rathenau, just over 10 years earlier. On August 30, 1933, another associate of Einstein, Theodore Lessing, was gunned down in Czechoslovakia, with the assassins receiving public praise back in Germany. Days later, the German press essentially laid a bounty on Einstein's head. Still, Einstein was unperturbed, telling a Parisian journalist, I had really no idea my head was worth all that. However, at his wife's insistence, they absconded to London for safety. From there, they traveled to the coastal town of Cromer in Norfolk. He stayed in England until October, when he traveled to America, where he would make his home. Number 5. He was offered the position of President of Israel In 1952, Israeli President Chaim Wiseman died, leaving the largely ceremonial position empty. Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion offered the position to Einstein, although somewhat begrudgingly, it seems. Ben-Gurion is quoted as saying, I've had to offer the post to him because it's impossible not to, but if he accepts, we are in trouble. Einstein had always supported the state of Israel, but he found the offer of the presidency somewhat awkward and declined immediately. He even refused to meet with the representatives of the Israeli embassy prompting Ambassador Abba Ibn to send him a letter urging him to consider the intellectual potential of the nation of Israel. The letter assured Einstein that he could continue his scientific pursuits, but stipulated that he would have to move to Israel. Einstein still declined, citing his advanced age and lack of interpersonal skills as the reason for his refusal. He stated, I lack both the natural aptitude and the experience to deal properly with people. Bonus Fact his brain was stolen. When Einstein died on April 18, 1955, his last words were mumbled in German, which were lost to the nurse on duty who did not speak the language. Almost immediately, the pathologist who conducted the autopsy removed Einstein's brain, without prior knowledge to his family, wanting to preserve the famous thinker's most extraordinary instrument before Einstein was cremated later that day. Einstein's son, Hans Albert, was understandably furious when, the day after his father's cremation, he read in the New York Times that Einstein's brain had been removed for scientific study. True to his flippant and modest nature, Einstein had insisted that his body be cremated without ceremony, 
and that the scattering of his ashes would happen in secret to prevent the place from becoming a tourist attraction for his fans. The pathologist who removed his brain was Dr. Thomas Harvey, who hoped to make a name for himself by studying the gray matter of the famed genius. At some point in his life, Einstein had made it known that he was happy for scientists to use his body for research, and Harvey managed to convince Hans Albert that studying his father's brain was a rare chance to try and uncover the secrets of true genius. Although Harvey, who was not a neurologist, promised to publish his findings as soon as possible, a paper had yet to emerge after several years. Over 20 years passed before a young reporter named Stephen Levy was tasked with finding Einstein's brain. There was no sign of it at the hospital where Harvey had worked, and there was also no sign of Harvey. Eventually, Levy tracked Harvey down to Wichita, Kansas, where he found the doctor less than forthcoming. After telling Harvey he was writing a story on Einstein's brain, Harvey replied that he couldn't help. After a while, Levy managed to persuade Harvey to meet him. During the meeting, Levy discovered that Harvey still intended to publish a scientific report on Einstein's brain, although he couldn't give a good answer as to what had taken him so long. After asking to see some photographs of the renowned organ, Harvey retrieved a beer cooler from a stack of boxes, inside which was Einstein's brain. It turns out that Harvey had measured and photographed the brain back in 1955. It even commissioned a portrait artist to paint it. Harvey then had the brain divided, and 200 slides of tissue samples were sent out to be analyzed. The results were underwhelming, and the brain seemed no different than anyone else's. Not wanting to publish these disappointing results, Harvey hung on to most of Einstein's brain even refusing to hand it over to the U.S. Army, who wanted it because Russia was also collecting brains. Far from giving Harvey fame and fortune, possessing Einstein's brain had cost him everything. He lost his job, wife, and career due to the controversy surrounding his decision to take the brain. After the rediscovery of the brain, more tests were done, and in 1985, it was discovered that the brain contained more glial cells than average. Those cells fixed neurons in place and keep them supplied with oxygen. In 1996, it was found that Einstein's neurons were more tightly packed than usual, which may have resulted in speedier processing of information. In 1999, Canadian neuroscientist Sandor Whittleson studied Harvey's photographs and determined that Einstein's inferior parietal lobule, responsible for spatial cognition and mathematical thought, was wider than usual. Since then, more studies have uncovered other anomalies, including an extra ridge on Einstein's midfrontal lobe. Thanks to Harvey, Einstein's brain has been preserved enough that it could be studied nearly 60 years after the death of the famous physicist, allowing modern science to gain extraordinary insight into the physical workings of this incredible brain. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about other famous scientists, check out our book, Tesla vs. Edison, a captivating guide to the war of the currents and the life of Nikola Tesla and Thomas Edison. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.